Shoppers. So this is Tina from Victoria Designs and I'm first going to show you how I print my journal pages. I get a lot of questions about this and I thought this tutorial is a really great opportunity to show you how I do it. Now for this tutorial I am going to not use the full-time journal pages but I'm going to use the margin size journal pages. They have like this white border all around. These are a little bit smaller because I am going to use one of our papers to act as a cover and otherwise that's going to be a bit too small. So I opened one of the JPEG journal pages. I'm going to show you with the PDF later as well. And I'm just going to click print. So I opened this in preview on a Mac, but the process is going to be similar on other computers as well with other um, image opening programs, etc. So I'm just going to make sure it is set to landscape just to be sure and then it automatically is set to scale to fit so it makes it smaller but i don't want it that small i want to choose myself how big it is going to be so i click scale it's now set to 94 percent i'm going to put it to 100 percent and 100 percent is how we intended it to be this size but of course you can play with it as much as you like. You could put it to 50%, you could put it to 63%, whatever you need. You know, really, you can play with this. So I put this on 100% and then I am going to click print and it's going to print at 100%. Since I am printing on an A4 printer, on A4 pages, part of this tagline is going to disappear, but it's okay, we're going to cut it off anyway. And then when I have my stack of pages, so I printed all 24 journal pages, on one side. I do not use the print on both sides thing at all. I just print the whole stack on one side, take the whole stack out, manually turn it around, the right way of course, back into my printer with my own hands and then I let them print again on the other side. And what I do then is I put the second round at 102 or 101%. And then those pages on the back side will print a little bit larger. And then later I cut out the side that was printed at 100%. You don't have any white edges and you only lose like a fraction from the design on the other side. Because printers tend to shift a little bit and don't always um, print nicely in the center. So to recap, I print all my 24 journal pages on separate sheets on one side, take the stack out, turn it around by hand, feed it back into the printer and print all these 24 journal pages again on the back side at 102 or 101%. You figure out for your printer what percentage is the best on the back because that's different for all printers. And also you don't have to print all the 24 journal pages. That's just what I did. You can easily just print four or 12 and fill up the rest with other papers and other, uh, yeah, other paper that you already have. You do your own thing. Okay, so that's actually how I did it. So I'm gonna cancel this and I'm gonna quickly show you how you can do this with a PDF. So this is the PDF opened with all the margin size journal pages. And then you just, do the same actually you just click print and you don't click actual size you click custom size well the custom size is already at 100% you print them all get them all out and when you print them again on the back side put the percentage to 102% or 101% whatever you like best of course make sure that the print on both sides thingy is turned off otherwise um, with this PDF, it's gonna print on both sides anyway, and then you don't have any control over one side being printed a little bit bigger than the other side. But that's a personal preference. You can definitely use lighter paper or even heavier paper. Hey, this tutorial, you can adapt so hard to your own wishes. It's amazing. And now let me show you exactly how to make this journal. So these are all the journal pages that I printed as you know, I printed the margin size and then on the back, I printed them 1% bigger. Sometimes you will need 2%. 
I used 120 grams paper. It's a bit sturdier than regular paper, so it has a really sturdy base to write on and to add things on if necessary. And I have here a stack of 24 sheets. That means that I used all the journal pages on the front and all on the back. Is there a special order? Absolutely not. I randomly printed them on the front and the back. You can choose yourself. And also you don't have to use only the journal pages like I did. You can also use a few of these and then bulk it up with ephemera papers, junk mail papers, coffee dyed or tea dyed papers, etc. Anything that you can find and that you want to put in this journal. And now I'm going to cut all of these out on the smallest printed side. For the cover, I'm going to use this piece of scrap uh, cardboard. Is it cardboard? Very thin one. And I'm going to cover this with fabric. Now, you can use fabric from your regular stash. But if you like, you can also buy these uh, small pieces of fabric with a pretty design in craft stores these days. But what I did was I printed one of the horizontal papers onto fabric transfer paper. These are the ones that I used, but there are many out there. It's actually pretty easy to use. Now always follow the right instructions on your packet very thoroughly. But the gist of it is you printed it mirrored on one of these sheets and then you flip it over on your uh, fabric and you can just iron it. Of course, iron the fabric thoroughly before so you don't have any wrinkles. Then you end up with fabric with the design on. Because of the color of the fabric, the design looks a little bit more yellow than the original design. But if this is all too much fuss for you, you can definitely just use other fabric. Also because I need to be able to wrap this around this and it still has to be a tiny bit larger than this. I'm barely going to get there, so it's a little bit more fussy when you um, do this, but I think it's worth it. And that is why I use the margin size journal papers, because if you look at this, this is barely higher than the journal pages, and I still need to wrap it around the cover. If I would have printed the full size journal pages, this would have been way too small. So I have cut all my journal pages right down to size. And it's actually a big stash, but I wanted the big sturdy uh, journal with lots of pages. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in half because it's gonna be one big signature. So I have a big stash here, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. But it's gonna work. You know what? I'm going to do this in two batches. Of course, you can use a lot less papers if you like. It's gonna be a lot easier then. Like this, just going to fold them in half. This, and this one as well. I'm gonna take my trusty bone folder. Now I'm going to put this back in sight. Of course, because this is such a big stack, but I chose to do that, this is gonna form a bit of a point here. What you can do now is take a heavy duty craft knife and a ruler and just carefully cut this off this point, but I'm not going to do that because our journal pages have these um, design these details on the side with the old paper like you see here and then this would all be cut off I'm not gonna do that I just need to make sure that your cover is um, wide enough so it covers this whole point point. and again if I would have printed all these 24 sheets on 80 grams paper instead of 120 this would be a lot less it's just I choose to do this and I am embracing the fact that we have this little point here and now that I have this ready I can measure my cover how big it's gonna be so for the height I'm first gonna go for the height and I already know that I have to make it as short as possible so that this fabric can still wrap around the cover here. So I'm going to see, of course it has to be a little bit higher than this. So I'm going to put this here and then in total I'm going to make it an eighth longer. Of course um, just make this first and then measure 
your cover a bit larger than you want to. So in my case, but it could be different with you, all printers print a little bit different, weirdly enough. So mine is a little bit bigger. It's actually seven and three quarters and a sixteenth high. And that is perfect for me. Of course, measure your own. Very important. And I'm also going to go check out the width. So first where it sticks out, I'm going to be here. And then here. And I'm going to add a tiny little bit. So to recap, I put it against this cardboard here and I measure the line here. Put it against the line and measure the line here again so the full width is covered. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch extra. I don't even think I have more fabric. So, no, indeed, that's just it. I hope I can get away with less. But I'm going to fold it and measure it first before adding this on. I'm going to cut this to size, so until here and that mark that I made there. Here it is cut down and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm not going to look at these marks anymore. Um, that's not necessary, but I'm going to carefully fold it in half. Look, if you're working with regular fabric and you have enough, you don't have to fuss as much as I'm doing right now, but I'm trying to make sure this all works. Bone folders here. The wrinkles are normal and don't matter at all. Let's put this in here. The height is perfect and for the width I think I can get away with cutting off a little bit more which is great because it's a bit too wide for my fabric. Okay I'm happy with that so this can be put aside for a bit and now my fabric. Let's see if this works. I can see through it. Only just, like just, 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 just. I'm going to trim it down a little bit because all the extra fabric is just going to be in the way. I'm gonna leave like, I don't know, half an inch around the, uh, the print on all sides. You can do that afterwards after uh, gluing it on as well actually you don't have to do this right now per se if you're using regular fabric also um, cut it down so it's manageable you can also always cut out some extra later no worries so now i'm going to put this on here with some glue i'm just going to use tacky glue you can definitely use um, fabric tack uh, probably also art glitter glue that i heard so much about uh, you can also use uh, a lean tacky glue for sure. And maybe this is even the worst glue that I have, but it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue all over here and then I'm going to spread it out to make sure non no big blobs of glue are going to seep through the fabric. Um, I'm using the silicone um, spatula here, but you can also use a regular um, brush, you know. It's just this is actually a very wet tacky glue and wet glue is like very watery glue is not what people usually like because it tends to make things wrinkle and i want to show you that everything's gonna be okay even with this so yeah this is quite a surface I might need to add some more later, I'm not sure, but make sure when you spread it out there's glue, a thin layer, but everywhere. Um, you want the fabric to stick all over the surface and not just in certain places, and because otherwise you can get some air bubbles. Also make sure it goes clean to the edges. Maybe it's a great idea to put something under here, don't you think? Yes, dinner. Maybe not the package of a thing that you still need later. I know, but this is the thing that's closest. Okay, I need to add some more here. That's great. See, the cardboard's already started wrinkling, but that will all be okay later. Yeah, I'm gonna go a bit closer to the edges because that's very important. You, you don't want any loose fabrics there. Okay, so 
it's completely covered. Great. Now I'm going to lay this on very straight, especially when you have patterns. Make sure, or a, or a beautiful design like this, make it very, very straight. You know what? I'm going to actually do it the other way around here because I can see where the picture ends through the fabric. I have like a little border all around, I think. Yeah, well, this is going to be barely enough. Well, you know what? I am very sure that if this is not enough, I can add a bit of inking on the top and the bottom. You know, okay, so this is sticking everywhere and I'm going to put some heavy books on top. And this will make sure everything will dry flat. There, and now I'm going to let it dry. It's that easy. So this has a chance to dry a bit. You see, it's completely flat now. Uh, I just took the books off and I feel like it's still a little bit moist, probably because the books were on there, but I think it's okay. Uh, it's flat enough and also now I can still move this. This has been drying for an hour. I just had lunch. And now I'm going to cut these off a little bit better. Tiny bit. So you can do this now instead of before. And now I'm going to cut the corners a little bit. See, I'm going to cut it almost straight, not at an angle like this, but almost straight. And then right before uh, the corner, I'm going to turn it and cut like this. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. I'm leaving a tiny little bit of fabric here so the corner can be covered as well. And now I'm going to glue these over and to do that I'm just going to use the same glue, apply some here, yeah, spread it out again. There, and fold over like this. Pull the fabric well enough so you don't have any air pockets on the top, especially when you're using these um, ink print transfers because where the transfer is starting, the uh, fabric becomes more sturdy and a bit less manageable. So this one's down. I'm going to do the same on all three other sides. So I'm holding it a little bit longer because I want the fabric to have a chance to actually stick to the cardboard, you know. It takes a little bit for the glue to set. There. Now I'm going to do the same with the sides. Okay, so I'm going to leave this to dry for a bit. I'm just going to bend this a little bit because while it's still wet-ish here, uh, I can still bend the fabric and the cardboard into place. Now for the inside cover, I printed a landscape paper onto 160 grams paper. It's a little bit too big here. Oh, I see these edges are starting to curl up because of the wet glue. Yeah, again, you can put some books on them, but I'm gonna trust that it's not going to be too bad. And I'm going to trim this down to size. I want to get it as close to the edge as possible because the print only comes up to here and here only up to here. That's why you can make it smaller if you like. Yeah, I'm going to make it an eighth of an inch less wide and less high than the cover is right now. There, that's pretty narrow, so you can definitely make it bigger if you like. But what I'm gonna do now first is ink the edges of this paper, but also ink the edges of the inside of that cover, just to cover up that my print doesn't come that far. I'm using vintage photo, yeah. But of course, you can use other colors if you're using other papers and other patterns, etc. Just see what works in your eyes, because you're the boss of your crafts. There. 
and out here as well. Yeah, I feel it's still a bit wet all with the glue. I'm confident to continue here, but if you want, of course, you can take the time to let things thoroughly dry. Okay, I'm going to apply this in here as fast as possible, and then I'm gonna put my books back on top so the whole thing will dry nice and flat. Yeah, let me put a piece of scrap paper underneath because I'm gonna spread it out again. So. This is proper wrist training, let me tell you that. Quickly spread it out before it starts warping. Yeah, normally I would put some double-sided tape on the edges as well, but since I'm gonna bend, fold this cover in half, the, um, the tape is gonna work against me. That's why I only want to use glue. It works with you. So, there we go. Let's see if everything is the right side up. Always check. And then I'm just going to glue this in. And the good thing is with all the wet glue, I have some time to readjust if necessary. So, here. I'm gonna put my books back on top and give this, oops, some time to dry. So this has been left to dry for about an hour now. It's of course not thoroughly dry, but it's good enough to work uh, with, so that's great. And the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna be a bit tricky, um, fold it in half. Of course, I already folded it beforehand, which is great, but I see now, see, you can see too, there's a bit of an air bubble here where I didn't put enough glue underneath. So be careful there. It's going to be visible, but not super a lot. So I'm not too worried. It's okay if it wrinkles a little bit. So I'm now going to do my best to bend this over. And yeah, you can see the air bubble right here. Bit of a shame. Learned from my mistakes. But it's not a huge problem. now has become a very sturdy cover and the next thing to do is put holes in here and in here sew it together ready that's it now I'm gonna start with these my stack is very thick as I have said like a thousand times already so I'm gonna do this in, in parts normally I would do a signature in one go to um, punch holes in them because but this this stack is just so thick I'm gonna do it in parts like in three parts or something Okay, I have a scrap piece of paper here and it is as long, as high, as the journal pages. Now, you can mark in which three places you would like your holes to be. I already made a mark in the center, but actually, if you want to be very simple, just fold in half and then fold in half again. And then you have three beautiful spots where the folds are. I'm gonna mark it for you so you can see it better. Where the folds are. And there you can fold this a bit better. And there you can make your holes. And I made a pencil mark here. Yeah, I will get rid of that later. Okay, so, but now I know where my holes need to be. I'm just going to line this up. Yes, it would be smart to add clips here, do that. I'm a bit too lazy to get them, even though they're right there. Okay, and then now on the fold, my fold is here, I am going to punch my holes. And here as well. There you go. I'm gonna go through very well so that my needle will be able to pass like this. I'm actually going to use this one now and put it in here just to be sure. 
that it's all in the right spot. I'm going to use this one now as my template. There. 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 And, and the last one. There. There. And there. And now I'm going to stack them on top of each other again. This. It could be because I did it in three parts that the holes don't really match, but I'll find it. It's a bit of a hunt. See? They're lined up pretty good. Okay, now I have to make some holes in my cover as well. Okay, I'm going to put my strip again on the outside. Now it's a bit less high, so I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm just eyeballing it that it's in the center here. And I'm going to make my holes again, but in the cover this time. There. And now the only thing I need to do is sew this all together and I have a sturdy notebook. Now to sew this all together, I have a piece of embroidery thread here. And it's a fairly long piece. I took 60 inches, but I might have to cut some off. I just wanted to be sure because this is going to be the binding and the closure at the same time. So I'm going to get my needle. So I have my needle on my thread. Now I'm going to go inside out through the signature and then also inside out through the cover. Make sure the cover and the signatures are facing the right way. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to leave, I'm going to pull the thread and I'm going to leave a little tail just to make my life easier later to make a knot. If you have less experience, it might be a better idea to have a clip here. But if you're a bit handier, and you've made some journals or if you already did some sewing already, you can just hold it by hand. Okay, I'm going to go back out. Either on top or the bottom, you can choose for yourself. So I'm going to go back back in, I mean, back in, back in, back out. So you were out and now we're going back in through the cover and through all the signatures back in here. There I am. Pull the thread completely. Yeah, that's tight. Of course, don't pull this out. And now I'm going to go all the way to the other hole on the other side back out through all the signature sheets and also through the cover. See, I'm going to pull it completely so it's tight. And then on the outside, we're going to go back in through the middle hole and I'm going to try to get my needle on the other side of this center um, thread here than this one. There. I'm gonna pull my needle through. Yeah, it's a bit of work here. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Okay. This is tight. I'm gonna check if these are tight and no loops. That's great. And now I'm going to make a double knot. Or a triple one if you want to be extra secure. I'm going to snip off here the longer thread. No, no, the shorter one. The shorter one. What am I saying? Because the longer one we need for the binding. And I'm going to go back out with the longer one. Through the middle hole. To the outside of the cover. There I am. It's a bit of <laughs> ringing. This... All the way back out. There, no loops. And that's it. You can get rid of the needle and make the thread shorter if you need to. So, still needs a bit of help with getting this flat. But look at this. You can just wrap it around. And close it in here. I think this is enough. So I'm going to cut this off. Which means that my total thread was about 
almost 50 inch. Well, it depends. You can make it as long as you want it, you need it, etc. So here's my travel journal, completely made from scratch with a fabric cover made with one of the printables from our kit. And it is sturdy. And look at this, look at these beautiful journal pages. Oh my God. Now I suddenly want to travel and fill this with mementos and, and tickets and other things, etc., etc. Oh my God, this is so cute and beautiful. Very, very happy with this one, you know. And if I've counted correctly, there are 96 pages to write on in here. And I'm very happy that I took the 120 grams paper to uh, print these journal pages on because now they're nice and sturdy and not too flimsy to write on. Okay, I am so happy with this one. You can make one for each strip that you make, you know. There, you can add a few beads on the end if you like. But that's it. Okay, I hope you really loved this tutorial and that it inspired you to make your own notebook or travel journal. If you have some friends that you think hmm, they might like this tutorial as well, please share the link with them. And I wish you a truly very beautiful day. Bye-bye.